They call them the Dirty Dozen. Twelve Tory MPs accused by Aaron Banks and his Blue Wave campaign of betraying Brexit. Now he wants Brexit voters to join their local Conservative parties and dump the Dirty Dozen as MPs. Are you really just trying to put the frighteners on these people? Well, there's an element to that. I'm not going to deny that. But I think what it's all about is... Uh, the, the so you want to keep them in line? Well, no. The, is, isn't that what whips do? Uh, well, the isn't that their job? Whips? The government's whips yes, well, job, <laughs> not your job. I think what, what I would say is that they stood on a manifesto of leaving the customs union, leaving the single market. And now these MPs are campaigning for a second people's vote. Banks' first target is Damien Collins, MP for Folkestone, which voted 62% for Brexit. He voted Remain, but he's never actually advocated a people's vote and never opposed Brexit legislation. Yet Banks says he's already dispatched to Royal Mail, addressed to every voter in Collins' seat, this letter. Damien Collins is a disgrace, Banks tells voters in Folkestone, and a snake in the grass. And Mr Collins used his post as chair of the Commons Culture Committee, Banks says, to launch a pathetic witch hunt against Brexit. Dealt with separately, so it's not, not Last June, Collins summoned Banks to an ill-tempered committee hearing where MPs asked him where his money came from and questioned his business dealings with Russia. I'm, I'm sorry, but there it is. I mean, this is democracy, isn't it, what Mr Banks is doing here? He's, uh, you know, encouraging members of the public to join a political party, get involved. You must welcome that. Well, it's a free country. He's got a right to do that if he, if he wants to. But I would say, you know, is, you know, what I think this is, is a very wealthy man, you know, who has taken exception to being questioned in public and has decided to you know, take this out against people like me who he thinks you know, shouldn't be poking our nose into his affairs. But I think he is the biggest donor in British political history. We don't know very much about him and his money and where it comes from. Keeps a lot of it offshore on the Isle of Man. I think we should be holding people like that to account. And quite frankly, I don't really care if he takes exception to that. He can send as many letters as he likes. I won't stop doing my job. The letter Banks says he's sending to the voters in Collins' seat urges them to join the Conservatives to put his position into question. Aaron Banks is spending huge sums on this. £38,000, he says, just to send this letter to the constituents of Folkestone. At the bottom is a chit soliciting further donations to pay for more letters to the other MPs on his so-called Dirty Dozen list. This is a hugely significant development in British politics. Rarely can such money have been spent outside an election at constituency level. Also, recent weeks have seen online ads and social media posts from groups connected to banks aimed at hundreds of thousands of constituents of the so-called Dirty Dozen, some with links to the sign-up pages for their local Tory parties. Aaron Banks gave us this league table which shows, he claims, which MPs generated the most clicks through from Facebook ads. Top was Anna Soubry with more than 200 clicks. If only a faction joined, it could change the complexion of her local party. Sixth, with 80 clicks, was Philip Lee. This is just unacceptable. Um, it's, it's not an appropriate way to behave, and uh, the, the sort of malign intent of this letter is just not acceptable in the, the party politics that I believe in. After Damien Collins, Mr Banks' most immediate target will be Devon MP Sarah Wollaston. But she's gone against the will of the people. Today, this video attacking her was posted by a pro-Brexit news website co-owned by Banks. If there are enough of us, we can get her deselected. And he's planning to spend tens of thousands posting a letter to all her constituents in Totnes. It's going to Sarah Wollaston's constituency shortly as well, and maybe a number of the others. But uh, as I say... We've and, actually, and that's you putting the frighteners on saying We've that. actually raised this money from the general public. It's money that's been donated. So Aaron Banks has not donated a single penny towards this. Do you expect people been, to believe that? You, you believe donated, what they like. donated what? Six, seven million yeah. to the Brexit campaign. And you're now suggesting that here you are, a very, very wealthy man, that none of your money's gone into this. We can absolutely prove it. We've got the list of small donations. I mean, the, the uh, Leave.eu was left with nearly 100,000 members. Uh, it's got nearly 1.5 million people follow it on social media. Um, the donations came from small 
uh, people interested in, in the Brexit campaign. And you didn't just slip them another, you know, half a million or... No. 100,000? No. Questions persist about how Mr Banks uses his wealth, but he denied to me allegations reported by this programme in July that he bribed a minister in Lesotho to secure a mining licence. Realistically, in Folkestone and elsewhere, getting local parties to sack their Tory member won't be easy. But at a crucial time in the Brexit drama, Banks is rattling some pro-EU MPs and may discourage others from joining his so-called dirty dozen.